Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. At the General Synod last month, it was agreed that the prayers of love and faith would be finalised, that pastoral guidance for clergy would be produced, and that a culture of welcome towards LGBTQI plus people would be embedded throughout the church. Sure. Thank you, Mr. I'd be grateful for, for an assurance there won't be any backsliding on the time scale on that, and that the pastoral guidance will deal finally with the issue of priests being able to marry and be freed from the current celibacy rules. But on a wider issue, uh, Mr. Speaker, he will be aware that a number of uh, provinces in the global Anglican Communion uh, have declared, in effect, UDI from the Church of England. A small number of parishes here have begun to with withhold their money from their dioceses in protest at these very small uh, steps forward. And isn't it increasingly clear that a small minority in the Church of England will never be reconciled to treating lesbian and gay people equally? And it would be better to let those people go so yeah. the Church can focus on the majority of Anglicans in this country who support treating lesbian and gay people equally. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I can tell uh, my honourable friend that the pastoral guidance is being worked on and that the bishops remain committed to implementing their response to living in love and faith, which the General Synod approved last month. Now, the timing may depend on the July Synod's response to the pastoral guidance and prayers of love and faith. The Synod is a democratic body, and like this Parliament, its decisions cannot be guaranteed in advance. In respect to the second part of his question, uh, he is correct that our proposals do not go far enough for some and go too far for others. And what I would say to him is that there have always been disagreements in the Anglican Communion, as there have been in the Church of England, and that we need to learn to disagree well. Bob Black.